好，全部 OK， 下车那位就坐。Friends of the media, good afternoon. This is the press briefing on the pilot green and sustainable finance capacity building support scheme. The speakers today are Mr. Joseph Chen, Under Secretary for Financial Services and the Treasury. The other speaker is Mr. Kenneth Ho, Head of Market Development Division of the Hong Kong Monetary Authority. The Under Secretary will deliver the opening remarks, and then Mr. Ho will. Gives us the details of the pilot scheme. We will hear from Mr. Chen, the Under Secretary, first. Friends of the media, members of the public, good afternoon. The government officially launches the pilot green and sustainable finance capacity building support scheme today. I will start by going through the background, the objectives, and the highlights of the pilot scheme. Then, Mr. Kenneth Ho, head of the Market Development Division of the Hong Kong Monitoring Authority, will speak on behalf of the Center for Green and Sustainable Finance. He will give you the details on how the pilot scheme works, as well as the requirements, the procedure, and the eligible programs. There's a global drive to achieve low carbon and sustainable economic development. This means a rapidly growing demand for green finance. Our country and our city have made it their goal to achieve carbon neutrality by 2060 and by 2050, respectively. Hong Kong is an international financial center of our country. It's also a leading financial center in Asia. We have a huge advantage in promoting green and sustainable finance with boundless opportunities ahead. With this comes the demand for talent in this field. To meet this need, the SAR government has been working with financial regulators and the financial industry in launching various measures to strengthen the local talent pool in the area. In the first half of this year, a number of repositories were launched for financial workers and students to find out about the training, data, and internships in green and sustainable finance. In October this year, financial reg regulators also launched the Sustainable Finance Internship Initiative to offer students more local internships. To further nurture talent for the development of green and sustainable finance, the Financial Secretary announced in the 2022-23 budget a plan to launch a three-year pilot green and sustainable finance capacity building support scheme. This is about providing financial practitioners and prospective practitioners in green and sustainable finance with subsidies to take part in the relevant training. The government has earmarked $200 million for the pilot scheme. This pilot scheme is open to financial practitioners, those working in green and sustainable finance, as well as students and graduates in the relevant disciplines. Upon completion of the eligible programs, applicants can apply for subsidies covering up to 80% of the program fees, subject to a cap of 10,000 Hong Kong dollars per applicant. Many full-time students enroll in courses on green and sustainable finance to prepare for a career in the field. In view of this, eligible full-time students applicants can apply for full subsidies of their course fees, again subject to the cap of 10,000 Hong Kong dollars per applicant. Application opened in October this year for registration of eligible programs. 19 such programs are available in the first round. These courses are offered by the continuing and professional education arm of local universities, professional institutes, and international training organizations. These programs cover green and sustainable finance in banking, asset management, and insurance. The list of course offering will expand to include more programs that dig deeper and engage with a broader range of issues. With an expanded talent pool, Hong Kong will be able to make the most of its role as a center and a hub of green finance in the Greater Bay Area. This means channeling international capital into green and sustainable projects to help our country and our city to achieve carbon neutrality by 2060 and 2050, respectively. I now give the floor to Mr. Kenneth Hoy, Head of Market Development from the Hong Kong Monetary Authority. He will discuss how the pilot scheme works. 
He speaks on behalf of the Center for Green and Sustainable Finance, the organization administering the pilot scheme. I will now give the floor to Mr. Hoi, and afterwards we will be happy to take questions. Thank you. Now regarding the program, the Secretary had already given us an introduction, so I'll now talk about the application criteria. The applicants need to be Hong Kong residents, and they also need to be practitioners or potential practitioners, so or prospective practitioners. We mean finance or non-finance uh, practitioners. For non-finance practitioners, their duties have to be related to green sustainable finance, GSF considerations. So whether they are current practitioners or ex-practitioners in finance or non-finance, they can still apply. So when we refer to prospective practitioners, we're referring to the relevant university program or tertiary program graduate. Just now we mentioned the non-finance practitioners, they have to contain GSF elements. So the PowerPoint has listed some examples. So when we uh, decide non-financial services, whether they have GSF elements, we have considered the demand for staff and in order to encourage more people to participate, we have taken some broad considerations, including uh, product development and sales, all these all, might all fulfill our criteria. So similarly, when we consider graduates, uh, whether they have taken relevant courses, we've also taken a broad approach. Now you can see we uh, uh, welcome disciplines such as business administration, public administration, all these will be considered. So eligible applicants, when their qualifications are acknowledged and in the first three years of, prior to the three, first three years of the program, that is before 12th of December 2025 when they conclude the program, they can apply for the subsidy. So now even though the program has to be completed by December 12th, December 2025, uh, they have to be aware of the eligibility criteria. So just now we mentioned that uh, the eligible programs, so the relevant information can be found on our website. So as the Undersecretary mentioned, under the program we have already accredited 19 programs uh, offered by local and overseas institutions. In the future, we will continue to accept applications and will provide more programs for uh, consideration. Now, regarding the reimbursement, we've listed the eligibility criteria. Now, typically, uh, we can uh, subsidize 80%. Now, if the applicant is a full-time student, the uh, reimbursement can be 100%. The same applicant can make applications for more than one area, but the total subsidy cannot exceed 10,000 Hong Kong dollars. So just now we mentioned the reimbursement proportion and uh, absolute amount is capped. So if they don't use the full amount, they can uh, seek other forms of uh, subsidy. Regarding the application procedures, uh, it's rather simple. So all the uh, procedures can be conducted online, including the downloading of application forms and so on. So when the, they have completed the course, they can still make an application three months after completion. When uh, they have been approved, they will receive an email or SMS message and all payments will be made in Hong Kong dollars. So that concludes my presentation and we welcome Q&A. So before you raise a question, please identify your media outlet. Uh, Oriental Daily. Uh, the limit is $10,000. But a lot of courses uh, exceed 10,000 Hong Kong dollars. So this cap, how was it determined? Second question, uh, ESG analysts, uh, it's com 
abducted by European institutions. But this uh, program in Hong Kong will Hong Kong have their own ESG analyst uh, qualification for, uh, standards, or will you be uh, referring to the European standards? Under Secretary, thank you for the question. I'll go first, and Kenneth can supplement. Now, regarding ten thousand uh, dollars, we've considered the different factors, including the uh, typical at uh, the average cost and the number of applicants and also the uh, government finances. So we will keep an eye on the program and make adjustments according to the conditions and uh, we can conduct further review. Now regarding to your second question, the eligible uh, institutions and uh, in Kenneth's PowerPoint just now, there's an annex who you can refer to. Uh, we have some international institutions, so I won't go through them one by one. You can uh, look at the screen, and quite a few of these uh, international uh, institutions provide ESG training. Now, Joseph is correct. The uh, eligible programs, aside from Hong Kong programs, we also have uh, international programs. So Hong Kong is developing a banking qualifications framework, uh, enhanced competency framework. It, it allows practitioners to uh, participate in uh, these programs. It will be available next year and uh, uh, so we'll promote it amongst the banks and other financial institutions. Next question. We see that uh, the uh, cap is at $10,000. So It is a, an incentive program for people to take, uh, to further educate themselves. So the applicant, can they receive funding and can they also at the same time apply to continue education funds? Because uh, these courses are not cheap uh, and there is competition for talent across the globe. Is there any mechanism to ensure that people who've applied for this uh, funding, after they completed the course, they will contribute to Hong Kong's economy? Thank you, Alex, for your questions. I will take the question first, and then Kenneth will tell us more in a bit. Now, first, for this pilot scheme, we also have the Continuing Education Fund, or CEF. The pilot scheme is different from the CEF in terms of their purposes and design. So we cannot have an apple-to-apple -apple comparison between the two. Now as for the subsidies, as we mentioned, the CEF is different from the pilot scheme, and Kenneth can elaborate on this. Applicants who have received our subsidies, now can they apply for other subsidies? This is allowed in principle for the CEF and other subsidy schemes. Uh, but it will also depend on whether the, those other financial assistance schemes allow an applicant to receive subsidies from multiple subsidy schemes. Now, of course, we want to have see this talent contributing to our local financial sector. So eligible applicants have to be Hong Kong ID card holders so that hopefully they can stay in Hong Kong and stay in the local green and sustainable finance industry. 
do we have other journalists who would like to put questions to the speakers? A follow-up question from me, Oriental Daily. Now, this pilot scheme is for Hong Kong identity card holders. Has the government assessed how many people will be able to benefit from this pilot scheme? Thank you for your questions. The first round of eligible programs, there are 19 such programs. These are programs offered by the continuing education arm of local universities, professional institutes, and international training bodies. So we have courses on a range of sectors, uh, banking, asset management, insurance, etc. Now, as for how many people can benefit from the pilot scheme, we're just launching the scheme. The list of course offering will keep expanding so that more programs, more qualifications will be covered. Our goal is to cover more programs for those interested to choose from so that they can find the training they need that's our direction. So at this point, we cannot say for sure how many people will benefit from the pilot scheme. This is a three-year pilot scheme. We will be closely watching how the pilot scheme goes. And through the Green and Sustainable Center for Green and Sustainable Finance, we will receive feedback from the users and see if adjustments and changes are needed. Journalist in white at the back, at the back, very back. I'm from Commercial Radio. The government has earmarked 200 million Hong Kong dollars for the pilot scheme. And the course offering may expand further. Is there any chance that the government will put in more money into this pilot scheme? Thank you for your questions. We're just launching this pilot scheme. The course offering we will keep expanding so that more suitable courses will be covered. As for the effectiveness, uh, over the next three years, we will review the pilot scheme to see where we can do better. Any other questions from the media? The speaker is now speaking into a microphone. The FSTB already has other subsidy schemes for the sector. With this pilot scheme, will that have an impact on other pre-existing subsidy schemes for the financial sector? Thank you for your questions. Financial talent is very important. For green and sustainable finance, fintech, asset management, and insurance, there are a range of existing schemes to nurture local talent in those fields. Now, what will this pilot scheme mean for other financial sectors? We are talking about the various parts of the financial industry, asset management, insurance, green and sustainable finance. So for each sector, there is training for each kind of talent. For ESG in particular, there are also other schemes such as a sustainable finance internship initiative. But that initiative is of a different nature. In some cases, it's just training for the qualifications but in the internship initiative, the emphasis is on hands-on experience. That's why in October this year, there was this sustainable finance internship initiative. This is for students so that we can nurture talent 
in various ways for ESG and green finance. There's a huge demand for this kind of talent. It's a rapidly growing area. The data shows that in 2021, we issued green and sustainable loans and bonds totaling 56 billion US dollars. This is four times the figure of 2020. So the issuance quadrupled over a year. Now, given how the amount of money involved has jumped, the various players in the financial industry are nurturing financial talent. Speakers not speaking to a microphone. That will not be the case. Our other pre existing schemes will continue. Any other questions? Alex from Commercial Daily. For the course offering, there are 19 eligible programs at the moment. How many courses are still going through the approval process? Are they the courses offered by local universities or are they offered by international training organizations? Now, for practitioners and non-practitioners, they can take part in the programs. So based on your assessment, do you think it will be more likely to be students in the area or those in the industry trying to make career changes who will be taking part in your training? So in the first round, we have 19 eligible programs. We are in talks with various bodies so that there will be more eligible programs down the road. My colleague. Kenneth will tell us more about that in a moment. Now, as for financial or industry practitioners and students, there are students who take an interest in ESG. Many local universities are already offering courses on ESG. For bachelor's degree programs, some local universities have launched a Bachelor of Science degree on sustainable development and ESG. So this goes to show the need for programs in this area. There are also financial businesses expanding their scope of operation. So there is a need for such talent. Regarding the number of enrolled students, it's hard to estimate. Uh, typically, the demand comes from two categories. We have professionals who have a profound understanding of the industry. They might be working in banks or other financial institutions where they focus on ESG. Uh, that might not be the, the largest uh, demand sector. Uh, in large ba uh, banks, there might be some 10 odd 20 people. But uh, when ESG infiltrates into different areas of banking, now, for example, in loans or bonds or even investment, we see uh, from sales to product development, they need to have basic understanding of GSF. So the whole finance sector of 200,000, they might need some basic training. So uh, for, in terms of the practitioners, there might be a large demand. Now students might also be interested in joining the industry. For example, we have internship programs where uh, we'd like to attract students into this field. So I um, just want to ask him, um, 
So how does the, the government expect um, this um, pilot green and sustainable finance capital building support scheme to help uh, the development of um, you know, nurturing sustainable um, finance talent in Hong Kong? So how, how um, will this help to you know, develop um, talent? Um, what role will this scheme play? And um, how, how important is, um, is developing you know, talent, uh, ESG, sustainable finance, um, for Hong Kong's role as, as, um, as a leading um, you know, um, green financing hub in, in the region and um, internationally as well? Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll try to answer this in two angle, right? First of all, uh, we set up the scheme is to encourage local eligible practitioners as well as prospective practitioners to participate in training related to green and sustainable finance in response to the new trend of developing low carbon and sustainable economy. So with this scheme, as more people are encouraged to participate in such training, we expect it will help groom the local talents and also enhance the capacity um, as well as the talent pool for, de uh, for developing sustainable finance in Hong Kong. Um, as I mentioned earlier uh, on in Chinese, at the moment, Hong Kong is already in a leading position and growing very quickly in sustainable finance. Uh, for example, if you look at the amount of green and sustainable debt issued uh, or range in Hong Kong um, in 2021, uh, we are talking about an amount of over 56 um, billion US dollar. And that amount is around four times of the previous year. So with that, uh, you can see that uh, the demand for such talent is, uh, is growing strongly. Uh, and we do believe that with such program, uh, we can enhance our competitiveness to ensure our sustainable finance industry uh, will grow in a healthy and also uh, in a prosperous manner. Thank you. Hey, I'd like to ask you say the demand is hot. So your understanding of financial institutions such as banks, their internal training, how are they doing? Will they be uh, encouraging their staff to apply for these, this subsidy or can they handle the training internally uh, or do they want the government support? Well, thank you uh, for the question, Alex. Uh, a lot of people have asked us this question. Now, if you're talking about students, they welcome this program because they don't have uh, company funding. Now, companies, there are two types. That is where the companies that have internal ESG training, but a lot of times the subsidy, uh, they might not be able to subsidize the uh, staff 100%. So as Kenneth said, we will subsidize them, but we'll ensure that there won't be double compensation. Uh, so if their company subsidizes them, uh, we can subsidize the shortfall, and uh, that would encourage them to take this training. Another type of company, there or another type of worker, they might not be involved in ESG, but they might want to switch careers. And uh, we would like to encourage these people after training, they can switch careers. They can have more career choices, and it also uh, enhances our talent pool. Well, that concludes uh, the press briefing. Thank you.